Two years after the release of Sinjutsu, I changed my opinion about Iron Maiden's 17th studio album and actually see it completely differently from how I did back then. Right after Sinjutsu's release, I posted an episode praising the record for its cohesiveness and saying that on their 17th studio album, Iron Maiden expectedly let their progressive influences out, or something like that. Yet the strongest feeling I had about the record at that point is that Sinjutsu is such a cohesive album with each song playing off and adding something to the other tracks on the record, to the point that at that time I actually could not imagine Sinjutsu being listened to not in its entirety. Meaning that after the first 10 or something listens, I simply did not long to come back to either of the tracks individually and rather kept returning to Sinjutsu as a whole, re-listening it from its very beginning until the very end. Even more, I stress the significance of experiencing this album as a cohesive whole, appreciating its emotional rollercoaster ride. And in fact, one of the weakest points of the record for me was the fact that in its coherency, Senjutsu actually did not offer any standout tracks. And I have to be honest with you, I actually was not fully impressed with the first single right on the wall when it first came out, and only learned to appreciate it among the other tracks on Senjutsu. course of the past two years, this opinion of mine has changed drastically. In fact, right now I mostly come back to the tracks of Sinjutsu individually, or sometimes tie them together with the other songs which evoke the same feelings. And this of course happened not only because of the streaming services, which randomly play for me those when on shuffle. Exactly. You see, I actually still believe that Sinjutsu is a very well thought through record, with each song playing an important part in painting the overall picture, yet while at first some songs may have sounded somewhat stretched out when played on their own, over the course of the past couple of years I picked up on many aspects and bits of them, and what is most important, those tracks were able to build a relationship with me as a fan, evoking unique feelings, each one of them by itself. And yes, with the war in Ukraine, it is Darkest Hour and Hell on Earth, which have rapidly become some of the most important songs for me of the entire Iron Maiden catalog. <laughs> weirdest thing, analyzing my feelings about Sinjutsu made me realize that the current Iron Maiden tour might actually be not the only thing which connects this album with Somewhere in Time. If we take a look at some of the early reviews of Iron Maiden's 6th studio album, many of them would be very similar in their substance to what I described initially, and maybe that's why this album has been vastly ignored by the band for so many years, and yet despite that, it has become one of the most beloved ones for the fans, as many of those songs, which initially have been somewhat underappreciated by themselves, were able to develop a deep emotional connection with the diehard fanbase and all those boys and girls who imagined for years what, for example, Alexander the Great would sound like live. <laughs> actually pointed out multiple times that the first single of Somewhere in Time actually serves exactly the same purpose on the record as the writing on the wall does on Sinjutsu. And given that it has remained among the two tracks which Iron Maiden kept playing live for the past 35 years, who knows, the writing on the wall alongside other tracks of Sinjutsu might actually become among those which people will remember and be nostalgic over many years from today. But anyways, there are actually a couple of reasons why I never released some of those, you know, ranking all Iron Maiden albums episodes on the channel, although I know that they do very well. And the whole fact that my perception of those records actually change quite often is one of that. But I have to be honest with you, when Sinjutsu originally came out, I actually did assume that it could be one of those records that you really like a lot initially, yet don't really come back to quite often later on. What? Yet I was wrong. My relationship with Senjutsu 
actually matured a lot over the last two years. And I do understand that on the Future Pass Tour, if you go several rows back from the barrier, many casual Iron Maiden fans stand still during the new tracks. And even more, I would even understand if Iron Maiden decided to drop some of them for the next lag of the Future Pass Tour. Yet at the same time, I have to be honest with you. Here in Hell on Earth, life at Vulcan Open Air this year was actually one of the most emotional moments of my life as a metalhead. But anyways, what do you guys personally think about Sinjutsu today, two years after its release? Please let us know in the comments. Oh, and very quick and very important, only around 30% of the people who are watching my videos are actually subscribed to the Metal Pilgrim channel. So if you still haven't done so yet, and especially if it is not the first video you're watching on this channel, please consider doing that right now. Thank you so much for watching the short video, guys, and we will prevail. Slava Ukraine!